All right, I'll invite the children forward for this morning's children's message. All right. How's everyone today? Good. Did we have fun at Sunday school today? Did you learn a lot? Even if my wife was teaching? I got to keep an eye on her so you let me know if she's misbehaving. All right. Who knows what this is? I stole it from the piano, but who knows what it is? Lindsay, what is it? Cornucopia. What's in this cornucopia? Flowers. Flowers? Yep. Yeah? Feathers. Pheasant feathers? What else is in there? What's this big orange thing? A pumpkin. a pumpkin? And what are these little yellow things? Anyone see them? I think they're supposed to be corn. Yeah, they don't really look like corn. All right, so what is a cornucopia? Who knows what it is? Besides a big wicker woven thing. Who can take a guess? When do we see them? Tyler. Thanksgiving, right. So the original cornucopias were actually a horn from a ram. And what do you think, why do you think we put flowers and pumpkins and corn and other things inside of a cornucopia during Thanksgiving? What do you think, bud? Decoration. Decoration? That's why we do it. Why do you think the pilgrims did it? Nobody? All right, so the pilgrims did it because that was all the things they were thankful for. And they would stuff it inside of this horn, and then they would set it on their tables as a reminder of everything they're thankful for. Now, imagine if we took everything we're thankful for, do you think it would fit inside a cornucopia? Lindsay, do you think you could fit Mark inside a cornucopia? No, it'd be pretty tough. Do you think, Tyler, what are you thankful for? A lot of things. Do you think you could fit a football inside of a cornucopia? Probably. It'd be pretty tight, I think. You'd pr that's all you'd get in there, right? What else are we thankful for? What do you got thankful for, bud? Toys God, gives. Toys God gives you, the blessings he gives you. Could you fit all of those in the cornucopia? Yeah. You must got a, little, a lot of little ones, huh? What are you thankful for? Candy? We could fit a lot of candy inside that cornucopia, and that would be fun. But God gives us so many blessings that we can't possibly fit everything in a cornucopia. But the cornucopia is just a reminder of everything that we actually have in front of us, right? And the pilgrims, they really needed food. So food was a reminder of the things they had. And God says, I've given you many, many things. Some things you can name and some things you can't. Some things we can see and some things we actually can't put inside a cornucopia. Could we put Jesus inside a cornucopia? No. no way, right? So let's thank God for all the things we have. Let's pray. Gracious Father, I'm thankful for all the things that we can see and touch and feel. And Lord, I'm especially thankful for Jesus. I'm thankful for the Spirit. And I'm thankful for the Father. That somewhere in the things in the mystery that we can't see, that we're so blessed to have them. I thank you for these kids, Lord. You continue to raise them and help them learn how blessed they truly are. I ask these things in your name. Amen. All right, let's get some candy. What are you thankful for? A combine. A what? A combine. A combine. You definitely can't fit a combine in a cornucopia. Did you get yours? No candy for you today? All right, this morning we are going to read into Luke here. And um, before I get started, are we coming back for more? Trading? Taking the long way around. All right, this morning uh, we're going to continue on in our Thanksgiving series. And we're going to be looking at um, 
Luke here, and we're start on verse 11 and go to 19. Listen now for the word of God. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten leopards approached him, keeping their distance. They called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. As they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He himself sat at Jesus' feet and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to them, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the word of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that as, as we listen to the words that you have given us long, long ago, I just pray that they will be made new in this message. I just pray that somewhere in the midst of, of the chaos of thanksgiving, that we find the true meaning of being thankful. I just pray for this message and these words. Amen. One of the traditions when I was growing up in my house, and I don't know for sure how this had started, but somewhere along the line, did we skip a song? <laughs> I'm sorry, ladies. Was it a super awesome one you would prepared together? We'll get it then. We'll get it. All right. Somewhere along the line, in the traditions of my family, my dad had started this tradition of watching Charlie Brown's Thanksgiving. Now, it's already been on a couple times. I've already watched it. I've, I've got it out of my, my um, spirit, if you will, because it's really a movie. Like, you watch it once, and you're in the spirit of Thanksgiving. So in this tradition of growing up in my house, I can, I can relate Charlie Brown to a lot of aspects of my life. Now, there's always one point in Charlie Brown's Thanksgiving that still, to this day, frustrates me. Now, we're going to watch a little clip here in a second about, about why this movie gets me in the mood for Thanksgiving and why it frustrates me as well. And maybe, maybe just for a second, we can see a little glimpse of what Jesus was seeing on the road as he approached these lepers, as he healed these lepers, and as they went on their way. So I'm going to go ahead and have you play that clip. So, a little um, background, if you have not, has anyone not seen Charlie Brown's Thanksgiving? Come on, <laughs> a reluctant hand. It'll be on like a thousand times this week, you're in luck. What day do you get out, you get out Wednesday for school? Yeah, DVR it. Okay, so in Charlie Brown's Thanksgiving, a little before what is happening is Charlie Brown has been invited to, uh, he always goes to grandma's for Thanksgiving. That's, that's his tradition, he always does it, he looks forward to it. And then all of a sudden, Peppermint Patty calls him up and says, Hey, Chuck, I'm coming over for Thanksgiving. So to start off with, she just kind of invites herself to Thanksgiving at Charlie Brown's house, 
so Charlie can't really go to grandma's, the tradition he's always had. So now he's, he's kind of stuck with his friends when he would rather be with his family during this time, who, on top of that, have just invited themselves over. And as a kid and, and a dog, because the dog helps him prepare this meal, they make the only thing they know how to prepare, which is toast, pretzel sticks, jelly beans, and popcorn. Now, that sounds like a pretty good meal to me. Like, I wouldn't be complaining. But in the midst of this, in the midst of this, this meal that he has prepared for them, this table, this spread, and in the clip before this, or the, in the beginning of the movie, they're having fun and they're preparing it and they're, they're buttering the toast and they're having a good old time. Here, out of everything that Charlie Brown has done, Patty complains. She says, this isn't Thanksgiving. This isn't turkey and yams and, and cranberry sauce. In all of this, Charlie Brown doesn't even get a thank you. He gave up his family. He gave up his day, a tradition that he loved to prepare this meal. He had worked hard-ish to prepare this meal for his friends. And yet they're unappreciative. I think Jesus understands Charlie Brown. Now that's not a theological thought, but it's a thought of my own. I think Jesus and Charlie Brown can relate to what's going on here. In Scripture, Jesus heals these ten lepers. So if you don't know what a leopard is, a leper, not a leopard, a leper was someone who had any sort of skin disease. Now we don't know if it was necessarily like, even if you had skin tags, or, or maybe when you got the chicken pox, you could have been considered a leper. But more often than not, it was a serious skin disease that carried with us. So the seriousness of it is people thought lepers were unclean. So you couldn't be out in normal society. You couldn't be around people who are clean. And most importantly, you could not go see the priest. So when Jesus is walking along the road and he meets these ten lepers, for one, it's, it's just this, this amazing aspect that he would even talk to these people because they were unclean. Then not only does he do that, but he goes one step higher and says, go and talk to the priest, go and see the priest. So they start off on the way because you're not going to not listen to Jesus. And along the way, as they go away from Jesus, they're healed. Their skin diseases, whatever's going on with them, is healed. So as they look at one another, as they're viewing each other's what was skin disease, they realize they have been healed. And one person... A Samaritan turns around and thanks Jesus. A Samaritan of all of them. Now, we don't specifically know if, if the other nine were, were believers or non-believers. We don't know that. But the one person to thank Jesus was the one person that we do know did not share the same faith with Jesus. It's almost like, it's like a sort of, of sarcasm to Jesus. When Jesus approaches these and says, Where's the other nine? I healed ten of you, didn't I? And here this one lone Samaritan is in the presence of Jesus thanking him. We all know the story. We all have heard the story of the lepers before. It's a very common one. But old Chuck, old Chuck Brown, I feel like he felt a little bit like maybe what Jesus was going through on that road. Here Patty invited himself over. He made all these meals. And then the aspect of just complaining, of grieving. Like I said in the, ch the children's sermon, we have all these ways to give thanks, to be reminded of thanks, of to share our thanks with others. But sometimes we just say thanks at that one time. That, that time that we maybe, maybe we just think it's the polite thing to say thanks. Maybe it's just a good mannerism to say, to say thank you. We sit around the table and we give thanks. As we near Thanksgiving, as, as Thursday rolls around and, and we too will begin to sit at our tables, like Charlie and his friends, and we enjoy all the, the good food that mom and grandma and, and grandpa and the grandparents and whoever um, prepares your, your meals at Thanksgiving, as they prepare and they're brought to us, we eat so much food that we should probably be into a food coma and we have that, that great big food baby going on. And we enjoy times with friends and family and we watch football and we take those 
Thursday Thanksgiving naps that are pretty common in a lot of houses. As we do all of these activities this coming week, it goes to that place that we recognize there is a difference between giving thanks and having gratitude. And that's what Jesus is actually going into in this parable, in this story. This is what we see in Charlie Brown, is there was a difference between having true gratitude and just giving thanks. I always find Thanksgiving season to have this, this sort of irony in our lives. It's sort of a, a holiday that is short-lived. Now, as we, we look at our other uh, major holidays, Fourth of July, we have in South Dakota, it's a big thing for Fourth of July to start two weeks ahead of time because you can start shooting fireworks and buying fireworks um, like a couple weeks ahead of time. So we have actually like two weeks of shooting fireworks in, in Iowa. I know it's like, a, it's a little bit more strict in here. More people, I think. But, it, but in South Dakota, we have like two full weeks to celebrate the 4th of July. And then Easter, man, we have like 47 days to prepare ourselves to, to celebrate in Easter and Lent. And Christmas, well, we're already starting on our Advent series next Sunday. We have weeks and weeks and weeks to prepare for Christmas. How many of you have your Christmas shopping done? How many have at least bought something for Christmas? Yeah, quite a few. So, what'd you buy me? I see your hand go up. <laughs> oh, okay. So in some aspect we prepare, but when Thanksgiving rolls around, maybe we thank God for the harvest, or maybe we thank God for, for keeping us safe. But then the irony of Thanksgiving is, what is the next day? Malia. Black Friday. A day that we spend all in madness. Now, if you don't know what Black Friday is, it's a time of darkness in my book. <laughs> and, and not only that, is Black Friday isn't even on Friday now. It starts on Thursday. And it's a time that we run around and we want to punch people and we call them non-Christian names and we grab all the stuff because we don't have enough stuff because we just got done saying 24 hours later I'm thankful for all I have but I'm going to spend the whole entire day buying stuff because it's on sale. The irony of Black Friday. We live a short, short term of thankfulness. And that's what actually separates gratitude, and giving thanks. Now, all out of that, that table talk, the polite talk on Thursday, the I love yous, I missed you, Grandma, thanks for the hoodie you gave me last year, don't buy me one this year. Out of all that talk and politeness that we have on Thursday, we forget it all up to five hours for you that go on Thursday night. In all reality, we live a day, a life, that we give thanks on one day. We don't live lives of gratitude. Because gratitude, to have true gratitude, it isn't that, uh, thanks. Gratitude changes our lives. Because having gratitude takes work. Having gratitude takes work each and every day of our lives. It means looking at the things more than what we're actually truly thankful for, like I said in the children's sermon, more than the things that we can see, but as a response to what we already have. If we live a life of gratitude, going crazy and calling people names and having bumper cart, cart wars in Walmart parking lots is not changing us to live lives of gratitude. Now I'm all for a bargain. I'm not talking about the ones that like go out there and politely, I'm talking about the madness of Black Friday. That shows our lives that we are not living lives of gratitude. We aren't blessed just to be blessed. God doesn't bless us because he's bored and feels like, ah, Melvin, you've been a good boy. Here's a gift. He doesn't bless us just to bless us. It is for a reason. God blesses us for a reason each and every day. If we receive grace, it isn't, isn't for just a reason. It is for a cause, a purpose. God didn't give us grace just, ah, here's some grace. He gave us grace so we could go out and do something with it. 
Same thing with gratitude. Yeah, you can give thanks. But gratitude means going out and doing something with that thanks. It is a response, a reason to respond to giving thanks. The nine other lepers that day, they didn't respond with gratitude. They were changed physically. But as they were changed physically from a blessing, a gift from Jesus, they simply walked away. See, there's something deeper that goes into, yeah, the lepers didn't give them thanks. There's something deeper that I think Charlie Brown was feeling. That in all reality, gratitude is way, way deeper than giving thanks. Jesus changed these men's lives. He completely changed them physically. And if you remember how I explained what lepers is, you couldn't go to the priest before. You couldn't hang out with your family. You were an outcast. You were as far outside of society as can be. You lived a lonely life. Now these men are healed. They can go home to their families. They can go meet the priest. They can have a normal life. So not only were they changed physically, but they were changed in every aspect of their lives. Yet only the one who didn't have the same faith responded with praise to God. That says something about our faith. In the end, if we don't see that our lives have been changed, if we go and we, we sit down at the table on, on Thanksgiving and we, we look at the things that we are truly thankful for and we don't see that our lives have been changed because of the things we give thanks for, then we're not living a life of gratitude. We're just simply having good manners. We're simply saying, thanks. Thanks for a job. Thanks for food. Now, tomorrow, I'm just going to go waste it all. I'll throw my leftovers away. I'll take my money and spend it on things that, that maybe I really don't need. I think about this passage from time to time as it, as it illustrates me in, in other ways of life and other things I think about. And sometimes I wonder, wonder what would I have done if I would have been on that road that day? What if I said thanks? Would I have, would I have turned around and ran back to Jesus saying, you've changed my life. I think sometimes as Christians, we feel that things, blessings, gifts to us in life are justified. We feel like, I've done enough work, I should receive something. Even in, as we look at grace, and we, we look at our salvation, we think, I've been a really good person, I deserve my salvation. That's wrong. We truly deserve nothing. Our sinful nature has taken us as far away from deserving anything that God has ever given us. Yet he continues to give. So I wonder, what would I have done? I remember uh, different times in my life when I've received blessings. I've overlooked saying thanks. Last week I talked about receiving an award that I, that I overlooked thanking the greatest person in my life, Jesus, for. I think about other times in my life when I've received something and I've never truly thanked God for it. I believe in God. I believe that everything, just like when we do our offertory prayer, I, I say, everything comes from you. The money, the things that fill this tray, it all comes from you. So we give you thanks. But maybe at times in our lives, we just get so excited we forget to give thanks. Maybe the lepers actually got so excited to go and see their families again, to go and be normal people of society, they simply forgot to give thanks. We've all been there. I'm no different than the lepers. I'm no different than you. We've all been to that situation where we forget to give God thanks for all that we have. We want to give gratitude, but we're so excited, we're so busy that we forget in the moment to stop and say thanks. Now one of the steps in dealing with people with, uh, with uh, suicidal tendencies, with, with depression, is to make them um, have a list of, of the blessings or the things in their lives that they're thankful for. Now in, in my um, counseling training, we've had to actually sit down um, with people in this case, or even with ourselves, and make one of these lists to see the effects of what it takes. If you have never made a list and wrote out everything you're thankful for, I do encourage you. Because in all reality, 
it takes a lot to sit there and write every little thing that you're thankful for. But the idea behind this is that when someone is feeling down, when you're feeling depressed, and you take a list or you start a list of all the things in your life you are thankful for, you realize that, that in all honesty, you have a lot worth living for. As part of my training, I created this list, and it, it was hard, just like they said. Sure, it was, it was easy to make the list, but to truly be grateful was the hard part in this. See, being grateful is a little bit different than that, ah, uh, thank you. It's more of that deep down loving stuff. And, and for a man especially, it's super hard for me to get down that list. But in all of this, you realize that you have a lot in front of you that you truly are thankful for. You have some things right now sitting maybe right beside you in the pew that you are thankful for. You go home and you have some things that, that maybe, maybe you could part with. Maybe you could get rid of them. Maybe you could give them to someone who actually would use them and appreciate them. Maybe, maybe you finally realize that in your life, God has used you. Maybe these are some of the things that you would jot down on your list. But see, that's what gratitude does. Gratitude gives us that list. And at the top of the list, it starts super, super simple. If you make this list, usually the first thing on your list is family or friends or jobs. The super simple things that you see each and every day. But as you begin to deepen the list, as you begin to discover more about what you actually have been thankful for, gratitude starts to take effect. And you begin to see the list get deeper and deeper and deeper. I'm thankful for the grace of God. I'm thankful for Jesus. I'm thankful for the freedom just to come in here and worship every Sunday, or whenever I want for that. See, gratitude takes that simple, warm and fuzzy feeling of Thursday, and it expands it to Friday and Saturday, and Sunday, and each and every day of the year. That's what gratitude does. It changes lives. That's what Jesus was getting at with the lepers. I changed your life. But have you changed your lives? Did you come back and say thank you? Your lives are changed. Where's the thanks? I started this message by saying that somewhere, somehow, old Chuck, old Charles, this tradition had been started in my family. That, that I'm not really for sure how the tradition had started of my dad watching. Maybe my dad was just like really bored during Thanksgiving and it was the only thing on. We had like the three channels on there. So Charlie Brown was on a lot. And maybe that's how it started. But Chuck creates this intersection, this, this joining between the jelly beans and the popcorn and, and the pretzels between something so simple, the things that maybe are on the top of your list, he creates an intersection to something so deep. He creates something that we would have never thought of. In this lesson about the lepers, Jesus takes healing, something so simple as just being able to go home to your family, and he creates something so deep that it changes lives. Every day, we can truly live a life of joy, of thankfulness. And it starts next Friday. And it goes till next year on Thanksgiving. 365 days a year, we live lives of gratitude, of thanksgiving. Not just this Thursday. This Thursday should not just be a day dedicated to saying, I'm pretty thankful. But let's truly live lives of gratitude each and every day. And let me show you in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you for the littlest things you have given us. And I thank you for our friends and family. And I thank you for the joys of the holiday season. I, I thank you for the laughter, the ringing of bells at stores. I thank you for the chaos because somewhere in the midst of chaos... We find you, Lord. We find the hope and the joy and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We find it in a Samaritan. 
We find it in the good moral people who simply don't believe. Because there's hope found in you, Lord. We truly are people who want to strive to live in gratitude, Lord. I just pray that you send your spirit upon us, that you can change our lives from the inside out. And at the end of that, we can truly say, thank you, God, for helping me see you throughout my entire life. I ask these things in your name. Amen. All right, ladies, I'm ready for this. Come on up. And I am ready to be blown away. Please stand if you are able and join me in singing hymn number 587, Thanks to God, My Redeemer. In the back of the hymnal, there is Theology of Leading Worship, and in, in the, lit, the liturgy book, excuse me. And in this it says, I am not an MC, and you should tell your musicians just to play. And I'm not making this up. If you guys want to see it, it says, just have them start, don't introduce the song, just have them play, and you'll play through and people will know what you're singing. Now, I'm kind of away from the liturgy as far from it as you can, so that's why I introduced the songs, but maybe you should just play next time. All right. With that, uh, we'll skip our final praise song, um, and maybe we'll sing four songs next time. So, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he send his grace upon you. May he look at you and offer you peace today, tomorrow, and always. Go in peace.